In 1818, the British East India Company defeated the Great Marathas in the Third Anglo-Maratha War and established itself as the most powerful political entity in the country. Between 1845 and 1848, several battles broke out between the Sikhs and the British, collectively known as the Anglo-Sikh Wars. The Sikh Empire got permanently abolished as well. The entire Punjab area was annexed by the British East India Company. With the annexation of Punjab, the entire country fell under the net of the East India Company. The British were confident that no one would dare oppose them again as they dealt a strong blow to the mighty empires of Bharat. But they were mistaken. As everyone suffered the heat of the British actions, be it kings and queens, merchants, traders, peasants, tribes, there was revolts and rebellions surging up in each strata of the society across the country. Let us look into some of the important native revolts that shook the British and took them by surprise. We in Bharat believe that whenever barbarism dominates and adharma grips the society, the righteous people with inner power will rise to the occasion to protect dharma and destroy the evil. The ascetics who protect and preserve our culture are called sannyasis. In 1771, when the sannyasis made a clarion call to end the foreign rule, the British government killed about 150 of them, stating no reason. This atrocious act ignited a rebellion. The Hindu sadhus, sannyasis, bairagis, Islamic fakirs, Sikh akalis came together for a common national cause. They took up arms, attacked and captured British establishments and institutions. The sannyasis gained support from every section of the society and inspired common man to rise up against injustice. The revolt spread like wildfire to places like Dhaka, Rangpur, present-day Bangladesh, Patna, Hooghly, Kooch, Bihar and more. The British administration, who looked down upon Hindu practices, started crushing the revolt ruthlessly. They arrested, cruelly tortured and executed hundreds of sannyasis. The revolt was crushed, but not the spirit. A century later, in 1882, Bankim Chandra Chatterjee wrote a novel inspired by the Sanyasi Rebellion. He named it Anand Mat. It features the national song Vande Mataram, which became the mantra for the nationalist leaders. Soon, these two words, Vande Mataram, lit up nationalist fervor in the minds of lakhs of Indians. In the forests of present-day Jharkhand, four Murmu brothers, Sidhu Murmu, Kanu Murmu, Chand Murmu and Bhairav Murmu gathered a large number of locals known as Santals. On 30 June 1855, they mobilized about 60,000 Santals and declared rebellion against the British East India Company. They even gathered about 10,000 Santals to run a parallel government, making their laws, executing them, collecting taxes, etc. They even captured the money lenders and zamindars who oppressed the natives and executed them. Caught by surprise, the British dispatched an army contingent to suppress the rebellion. The Santals crushed the British army, which alarmed the British. They announced a bounty of rupees ten thousand to arrest Sindhu and Kanhu. The revolt stayed alive for many months. The British were frustrated that they could not overpower a simple tribal force with primitive weapons like spears, bows, and arrows. They embarked on a ruthless mission. Murmu brothers were killed, and the revolt was ultimately broken. About 15,000 Santals were massacred, and many villages were burned down. Two women, Fulo Murmu and Jano Murmu, were the heroines of Santal rebellion. On one of the nights of the revolt, they attacked the enemy camp and killed 21 British soldiers. The Khol tribals of Chota Nagpur, Jharkhand, rose in revolt against the British in 1831. The Khols were losing their tribal lands to the East India Company day after day. Moreover, the locals were subjected to forced labor, high rate of interest for loans, and confiscation of their cattle. Under the leadership of Buddhu Bhagat, Joa Bhagat, and Madara, the Khols used guerrilla warfare tactics and launched surprise attacks on the British. They were joined by other tribes like the Hors, Orans, and Mundas. The rebellion was suppressed by the might of the British weaponry. As always, the British could crush the revolt, but not the idea. During the late 1800s. Birsa Munda from the Munda tribe rose up as a great leader, inspiring the spirit of revolution in thousands. The growing popularity of Birsa Munda impeded the conversion activity of the Christian missionaries in the tribal lands. Birsa felt the need to fight injustice by taking arms. His close associate Gaya Munda trained the people in use of bows, arrows, spears, and swords. Birsa's village Kunti became the headquarters of the revolutionary force. 
The tribe, led by Birsa, launched attacks on the British establishments, including Kunti Police Station. Birsa and his tribal army challenged the British through their guerrilla attacks and flash raids until 1900, when the British launched a massive hunt for Birsa. They killed Gaya Munda and captured Birsa while he was asleep, as he was betrayed by one of his own men. Birsa was tortured while in custody and he finally died of cholera on 2nd June 1900. After the British passed the 1882 Madras Forest Act, they exploited forests for their economic benefit. This affected the free movement of the tribals. They depended on the forests for farming and their livelihood. The changes meant that they would have to starve. The British demeaned the natives by their exploitative coolie system, where they worked in projects like road construction. There entered Manyam Virudu, fondly called the hero of the forest, Aluri Sita Ramaraju. Despite being highly inspired by Gandhi and his non-cooperation movement, Raju believed that the force of arms was necessary to show the British their place. He conceived a tribal revolt to overthrow the British government. He influenced the different tribes of the area to come together, got them trained in guerrilla warfare and attacked the oppressors. He raided three police stations on three consecutive days in 1922 and captured a huge number of guns, bayonets, cartridges and swords. The fight carried on till 1924. The British deployed special police trained in jungle warfare, trapped Raju and shot him dead. The British had to spend over 40 lakh rupees in those days to defeat the Rampa rebellion and stop Raju. The British devised many cunning and wild strategies to expand their empire and to plunder more and more. Yet, common man resisted. British tried to quell a rebellion by killing the leader. But leaders rose up again and again in various parts of Bharat, making life difficult for the British. Our salutations to the brave heroes and heroines who did not give up on their ideal to free India. Vande Mataram.